Hi everyone, my name is Amy, I'm 19 years old and I am so excited to be speaking to you all today. I'm the co-founder of an environmental educational charity called Kids Against Plastic, which aims to tackle the huge issue of plastic pollution through youth empowerment. I'm also the youth action lead for an organisation called Common Seas, and with my sister, I'm the author of the books Be Plastic Clever and Be Climate Clever. Ever since I was around your age, or even younger, I've always loved reading and writing. It's such an amazing way to get across your message and tell it for the whole world to hear. So to be able to have my own books about the issues that I'm so passionate about, things like plastic pollution and climate change, is an absolute dream come true for me. Now the books are all about breaking down these big environmental issues into ones that are understandable for us all, but particularly for us young people, and also making them issues that are actionable. It's not just important to know about the impact that's being done by humans to our planet, but also the things that we can all do to help tackle them. And that's what our books really aim to try and do. Throughout our book, Be Plastic Clever, there are also a variety of diary entries from our journey that my sister and I went on through setting up our charity, Kids Against Plastic. And also the opportunities and the learning experiences that we had all throughout the way. So today I'm going to read you just a few of these diaries from over the last seven or so years that we've been running our charity to give you a taste of what environmental action can be like and why sometimes you really have to push yourself to make the change that you want to see happen. Now, this first diary entry that I'm going to read is from right before we even started Kids Against Plastic, and it's an entry called Artivism. So, Ella and I were around 9 and 11 years old, I think, when we decided to build our Monster of the Ocean sculpture. It was a dangerous looking sea reptile thing made from plastic that had been washed up onto the beach in North Yorkshire. I'm not even sure that we were really that into plastic pollution at that point. I guess we were just fed up of seeing plastic rubbish washed up on the beaches where we like to play. Oh, and the plan was to enter our sculpture into a competition being run by an ethical ocean focused clothing company. So we did a beach clean and we took the rubbish items that we'd collected home and we washed them in a big dustbin full of soapy water. Then we started building and gluing the different objects together to create our piece of art. We had no idea what the monster should look like, but we used a jaw-like piece of tubing as a starting point and we just made it from there. Eventually, ta-da! The final touch was completed and our monster of the ocean was ready to be taken back to its original habitat for a photo shoot. It was a metaphor for the threat of plastic to our oceans and we were very happy with our artivism as we call it. Art and activism equals artivism. Now using art to support a campaign or promote a cause is a really tried and tested approach. The idea is to create something that looks really interesting or appealing at first glance. This is sometimes referred to as eye candy. But once looked at more closely, a deeper message is revealed. A few years later, we had become much more aware of plastic pollution. So after visiting an exhibition on ocean plastic at a museum in Brighton, we headed straight to the beach, fists clenched, feeling angry and determined to see what state it was in. We found lots of what we would later start referring to as the big four, plastic cups and lids, straws, bottles and bags, as well as large quantities of nylon fishing line and netting. We felt compelled to try and do our bit to raise awareness, and so we took all of the rubbish that we'd cleared up onto the promenade. We used the discarded netting to create a mesh onto which we added bottle tops, bottles, bags. The strings of lids and bottles we tied onto it rattled annoyingly along the metal railings. Perfect. We chalked slogans and stats about plastic pollution onto the pavement below. As we walked away, we turned and looked proudly at our artivism installation. After all, we'd removed plastic that had been on that beach for possibly years. The next day, however, we learned that the council had actually removed our installation. We were not happy at all, but we were able to smile at the irony of the council only considering the plastic to be a nuisance once it was on the promenade, not when it was on the beach. 
But of course, activism for the environment can be done through all sorts of methods, not just art. And for us, slightly more successful ones. One of these is public speaking, telling lots of people why issues like plastic are important. And whilst it can be scary, it's definitely key to making a change happen. And you'll hear that in this next entry. Dear Diary, talking at the United Nations. In December 2019, Ella and I were lucky enough to join four fellow young female activists at a human rights conference called the Young Activist Summit. The event took place on Human Rights Day, the 10th of December, and we couldn't think of a better way to celebrate the day than by speaking in the Human Rights and Alliance of Civilizations room in the United Nations in Geneva, where the summit took place. We had the opportunity to talk alongside the other girls on a panel in front of students aged 15 to 25 in the morning and then to government officials in the afternoon. It was an incredible and, to be honest, nerve-wracking opportunity for us to stand up in front of some pretty important people and share our message. The other young women talking came from all around the globe, from Brazil to Iraq, each with an interesting, emotional and important story to tell. We may have different causes, but in the end, we all have the same goal to build a better world and bring about change. Change that could only happen if we all work together. This last point on working together is super important. There's no way that we can stop issues like plastic pollution unless we all get involved and do our bit. And we as young people have a hugely important role to play in that. So to finish, I'd just like to read one last extract from the book to you on why now is the time to act. According to some of the clever people at the United Nations, we need to stop the earth warming by 1.5 degrees Celsius, or we'll see even more disastrous effects of climate change. If the earth warms by two degrees C, the sea will rise higher, almost all coral will be at risk, and there'll be no ice in the Arctic once every 10 years instead of once every 100 years. In order to stop this, we need urgent climate action, now. The UN say that we need to take global action to help the planet by 2030, and that doesn't give us long. Now this can be pretty scary. The effects that climate change will have on the planet will be terrible, as is the global lack of action when it comes to dealing with it. But we need to remember that we can all be part of tackling tricky problems and making a difference. We don't need to wait for world leaders to act before we all do something. We can't let the voice of the youth go to waste. We're more powerful than we think. We shouldn't let our age hold us back or listen to adults who tell us we don't understand. We need to stand up for what we believe in, for our generation's future and for our children's. Standing up for the environment can be done in so many different ways. It can even start in the classroom you're sat in right now. As part of Kids Against Plastic and Common Seas, we run an initiative called Plastic Clever Schools, which helps you to start taking action on plastic waste starting in your school, with the help of your friends, your teachers, even your classmates, and all of the resources and guides that we've put together for you as well. But change can even start smaller than that. Even going home from school today and trying to cut one piece of plastic from your life, or learning more about plastic pollution or climate change, or even just telling one other person about environmental issues, is all hugely important. And they're great steps to help us all together be a bit more plastic clever.